guys, what's going on? Ryan here with Mike. There you go, and this is number eighteen of the Stalker Effect. I almost messed that up. Do we gotta come up with some like interesting go get him catch thing at the beginning of these things? We gotta have like some kind of something. All right, some kind like, of. We're already rolling with the whole. We're rolling with the whole teenage podcast thing already, but we gotta expand from that. Yeah. Come up with something cooler than just that. You know what I mean? Uh huh. But you yeah. fucked it up. I'm just kidding, dude. You know what's funny? When we get like, um, the I watched the beginning of one of the new Bad Kid shows, and they put in the bloopers of them trying to say like the sponsors and stuff, and it took them like ten minutes. Wow. Just to like get it right and like to say their lines the right way. So I mean, we're not doing bad, but you messing up the recording on our fir- on your first go with this. So whoa, you didn't have to tell the audience that we're I messed up. We're pretty good that you're fucking it up, man. It's pretty good. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. You, you have everything for your set up, your computer set up now, don't you? Yeah. That's what I. Th- you got the you got your headset, your mouse, keyboard, monitor. You're all rocking out, man. You got nothing stopping you now. Yep. Nothing, nothing but stopping me. Nothing but money and hours dude i'm so mad i only got nine hours this week that's that that honestly that's really crap i don't i couldn't i couldn't work if i only worked that much a week yeah i couldn't it, it's just it'd be so pointless like you know people talk about because the people that have a job normally not i'm not not you in this particular but people that work a job and only get like that many hours a week they they're those kind of people you know that have the job just say yeah i have a job you know, yeah. make like their parents happy or whatever, just to say they have it, but they're not really doing anything with it. Yeah. Like even if it was 10 hours a week, I that's like one day a week. That's not, or two days a week. That's, that's nothing. Why would you even bother going in and getting like 50 bucks a week? That's nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm happy you know. in like my realm that not, I, I did get my hours cut with this new scheduling stuff, but I might've gotten hours cut. But on top of that, I got a raise, so now I'm making my paychecks are they're closer to where they were before because of I'm making so much more. They're not they're still less, but they're a lot closer than if I wouldn't have gotten my bump up. What may I ask what your raise was? Did I did I I didn't tell you? Oh, was it it was it the nine dollar raise that you're so happy yeah. about? Mm-hmm. Nice, dude. It's seventy five cents, man. Whole seventy five cents. Nice. Yeah, seventy five cents. That's a big. That's that, a big that jump. Is, I know that is a big, pretty jump. It's a big jump for anyone, especially when you're not even eighteen, man. So, it's a pretty nice, hefty, uh, what a rocking it out, rocking it out kind of jump to have. And now I know too that I'm capable. Like I'll by the end of uh, by summer, I'm gonna hopefully be up to nine fifty ish. Really? Wow. Mm-hmm. I can't even get up that high. That's like, that's being with them for almost two years. So yeah, that's about right. About right. Nice. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking about trying to get another job at like McDonald's and then quitting. Yeah, you should. You should still like. You should keep applying around or looking while you have this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, go up and apply at the Middleburg Heights Bob Evans. My old manager works there now. He'll hire you. I don't Guaranteed. Know. I don't know. Want a job? He'll hire you, dude. Swear to God. He got sh- he got transferred there like last week or something. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know, cause uh, I feel like I feel like if I leave, that's like bad. You know, it, it'll mean, look if you bad. Leave? Like, well, like if no, leave? not if you're quitting. Not if you're leaving because you're getting crappy hours or it's not consistent. That's not it, – it's bad in a sense, but when you go somewhere else and saying, well, do you have another job? And you're like, yeah. Well, like, are you willing to quit the job? Yeah. And you say, why would you quit? Well, they weren't giving me hours, so. I guess so. I went elsewhere because they're giving me more more hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you have a vo- – like, you're not quitting just to quit. Like, in, the, I tell you the core is thinking about quitting. Is he really? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Dude, that kid. I know, right? That kid. Three people put their name on an app for him, and then he's going to quit the job because he's not, like, cooking yet or something or because he's just doing dishes right now, and he's only been there for, like, a month. Wait, it's kind of like... He's still only doing dishes? Well, he's only been there for, like, a month, and he works two days a week. He gets less hours than you, Mike. Yeah, that's true. And But that's mostly because of the fact that he wants that, though. He doesn't want more hours or to work more. Yeah. Which is dumb because he wants to do his sport. I don't know. He's like, 
Corey's weird, you know what I mean? He wants all this stuff, but he doesn't want it to work for it. Yeah, I know. It's a weird... And there's a lot of people out there that like that, which is really weird, you know? They want kind of everything to come to them. Uh-huh. And once you get through college and into college, you kind of see that that's not, that's not how it works. Yeah. You got to... Do it. Do stuff and invest the time and the and the money on your own on your own terms and crap to make stuff happen. I'm gonna start looking. I didn't close my door. <laughs> I'm gonna start looking into the. Uh, hopefully, start reading about marketing and um, networking and like stocks and stuff. That's what I should be look. That's what we should be looking into right now. Stocks and networking. Stocks. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So we can invest in the stock market. Yeah. That's where the money is, dude. That, that is where, where the money is, but you need lots of money to make it where no, the you money don't. is. Yeah, you do. No, you can start with nothing, and then you can still you can start with nothing. It's not hard. You can start with nothing, but you're not gonna be where the money goes. Then you're just not right away. But you'll see if you do it the right way and you learn from the right people, you'll see significant gains in short periods of time. I mean, it's that's hard to do though, because lots of people do this for a living. And they went to college for years for it, and they still don't see significant gains. Yeah, because they're not. Because that's the thing. Like you have to learn and pick up and read the books and gain the knowledge from the people who've done it. Though you can't, you know, go to college for four years and then do. You know what I mean? Well, do you, don't you think that they you would have to find read the, right the books people. and find the people that know how to not do it? Not all the people. No, not most people don't. They don't actually go the full step and actually do all that you know what i mean yeah like they talk about it or that they, they start doing it right they start reading the books or they go into the people and learning about what they did and how they did it but then they don't like follow through all the way or whatever yeah because like maybe the first time it didn't go out the way it was supposed to or they didn't see the gains or the profits they wanted to see or something yeah i know i i, I get what you're saying but i mean I, i'm still gonna roll with this kind of stuff for like six months after high school I'm not. I'm not rushing anything. Oh, like, yeah. there's no need to for me. Yeah. Did, we talked about that, didn't we? How the whole rushing the future thing was that you? I talked to that about. I don't think so. Or did I do that ran on myself by myself? I don't. I don't think you talked to me about that. All right. Like you know, when high school comes around, junior and senior year, more pre- more specifically senior year, it's all about what do you, where are you going to college at. And it's mostly where you're going to college at. I've seen a lot when it comes to stuff this year. It's not what are you going to college for, where is that going to take you, what kind of classes are you going to have to take, what are you kind of going to have to acquire. You know what I mean? It's more so just where you're going to college at. If you're going, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they push you so hard on enrolling to colleges with you not even knowing what you're going to go in and study for four to six years, right? Yeah. Or if you're even going to be interested in that field for your rest of your life or your career, or if there's even a job in that field you want to get a degree in. You know what I'm saying? No one looks at that stuff. I mean... Because isn't it like a statistic that... It is it is a statistic that like most... It's at least 25 to not 50% of people that change their major like two or three years into college. Because they realize that they don't want to study that. It's not that they realize it. It's that they have a general idea of where they're going to go. And then from there, they transfer into... Uh, like a more specific field, like okay, I know yeah. a lot of people at uh, Eileen's College, Case Western Reserve. You know, mm-hmm. they they started out like her. Like I think she started in uh, she started on course for like biomedical or something like that, and then she changed majors to something more specific. Like I think it was I think it's now she changed to. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Something, something, something medical engineering. I don't know. It's, that's what a lot of people do, though. They don't really change them. They just, like, specify them more. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. But a lot of people honestly don't have even an idea where they want to go when it comes to a general field. Yeah, that's true. Some people do, but most people don't, not right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because once you start looking into that field in depth, you know, either just going to school and learning about it or reading books about it or seeing the kind of jobs that are out in that field, you say, I I don't want to do that the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's so rushed when you get into high school the last year that you have to be applied into college and ready to go right after senior year. You know what I mean? 
It has to be instant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything's instant. There's no, you can kind of, they, honestly, I think that there should be a period of time where after high school, before college, there's less a period, you know, six months to a year where you kind of get out into the world in a way, see what's out there. You know what I mean? Before you make a decision. And in that time, hear me out here too, you're go you can be going to community college or whatnot and getting your undergraduate courses that you have to take in colleges to graduate, right? Yeah. Or you're not doing that maybe, maybe you're working full time and you're doing other stuff, some kind of like um dream thing or you're pursuing some other thing that could happen, right? Reading up on something else while still looking into that at the same time. But yeah. the key thing, however you're doing all this, is that you have to have some kind of ultimate fallback plan. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Whether that's eventually going to college for something or going into the military or go over here and work this job the rest of your life. You have to have something to kind of fall back on so then you're not, after that year of kind of living in the safe zone, you're not in the gutter for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. And people get, people. get it worries people so much and it, it weighs on them so much, the fact that, I don't know why people think that, you know, you go off to college, you're kind of leaving everything behind, and you kind of are to an extent, right? But yeah, I guess so, but, you know. not No, not even at all. Not fully either, you know what I'm saying? Well, you're not, like, you're not really, like, keeping it with you, though. It's sort of like there... You have a chance to start another chapter yeah. somewhere else, but yet still being able to continue from a previous book. Yeah. If you really needed to, you could go back. Yeah, if you had something important in the previous book that you wanted to take with you, you know what I mean? And it meant something significant, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know what you're saying. And there's no reason why you can't do that or why you shouldn't do that. But people get hung up on it thinking that things are going to get tougher. You know, they won't be able to take this with them from there or this from there. Or that most people, it's just the stress of the pressure of everything coming so so at once. And they feel the need or the desire to do it all at once because everyone's telling them they do. Yeah. You know? Uh Uh-huh. I don't know. Like, it's just a, it's like a culmination of, like, the things you, you see, plus the things you've been hearing. Like, I've been listening into these, uh, to, like, I wouldn't want to call them, like, I don't know what kind of speakers I would like to call them, because it all, because what they speak about just depends. I'd say, I guess it depends more, like, on the speaker or whatever. You can just call motivational speakers. That's a general statement. But they're not. But the one guy isn't really talking about that kind of stuff, though. The one I'm listening to right now, I don't. I wouldn't call that motivation at all, though. What's he saying? Like, I was gonna call it that, but it's not. I don't really think of it as that compared to the other things I listen to that I would consider the motivational stuff. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I don't, maybe, probably not. No, no. I don't know who you're yeah, listening to, but Jim, uh, Jim Rohn. I'm listening to one of his tapes right now. You ever heard of him? No. Probably not. I'll Google him. Google Jim, Jim Rohn. R- Rome? Rohn. R O H N. R O H N. H N. Ah, he's right there. Dude, he's an oldie. Well, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. Okay. My bad. Died pretty recently, though. Alright, uh, let's see. Like, right now, it's, I don't know. You could consider it motivational stuff, but it's more just like. I think of that and some other stuff I'm listening to is just like life skills, life lessons, okay. life yeah. philosophy. It says, uh, for more than 40 years, Jim Rohn honed his craft like a skilled artist, helping people the world over sculpt life strategies that have expanded their imagination of what is possible. So he's like, he's like telling people they don't need to follow the norm. Like you don't need to go to college. You can live a happy yeah. life by doing something else like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, kind of like that. Like, here's the principles, right? Here's how certain stuff works. Here's key key things of leadership, communication, things that you gotta learn to do better your speaking ability. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then go out and do this. Like, you don't need to go to college to do this. Like, and like simple philosophy. Like, if you're in America, right? If you're 40 years old and you have not made your fortune, something's wrong, right? Yeah. Because there's all the possibilities for anybody to make their fortune by the time they're 40 years old. Wait. If not sooner than that. Is it, when he says fortune, that doesn't necessarily apply to money, right? No. Okay. Fortune can be anything. Yeah. It can be I was just like how he, describes, how he describes what enough is. Like He's like, if you're doing 
as much as you can and you're only making 10 grand a year, that's enough. If you're doing all that you can and you're making 50 grand a year, that's enough. If you're doing all you can and you're making uh, 100 grand a year, that's enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. No matter who you are or like what level you're on, as long as you're doing all you can, it's going to it's enough. And you have to look at it like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you just have to remember that you're doing all you can because most of the time when you sit down at the end of the day after you think about all these ideas and principles, you're really not doing all you can. You think you are, but you're doing all this other stuff on top of it, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. Like blaming things or procrastinating or this and that. It's all stuff you just have to listen to and just apply it to yourself. That's like the weirdest thing about um about the people that kind of talk about this kind of stuff is it's just like you have to listen to it, apply it to yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And see if you even believe in any of that stuff. Because a lot of people don't believe in, like, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. She's, like I know the set. Saying. Like. How, like. Go ahead. I, don't know, I was just filling in words. I don't, I don't really. I didn't really have anything to back up what I said right there. Like, are you, are you like, not even knowing what I'm no, talking I, about? No, I know what you're talking about. It's just, I, I. You don't think about it. I haven't thought about it. Yeah, I haven't thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, That's completely legit. Most people don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I talked to you about how honestly and in reality through a lot of the stuff that I've written down and seen, I'm really a lot mentally, you know what I mean, ahead of most people. Yeah, you're mature. I don't, yeah, mature is the word for it. Like, I'm ready to go out. I've been ready to go out and have a, an actual job and do all that kind of stuff for a while now, right? Uh-huh. I dread going to school and living the same thing all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I know what you're saying. But that's just because of how I, you know, things happened and how, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's just kind of like how I've, circumstances, this and that, led to this and that happening like this. So now it's just like, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to do things that way. I don't need to be sitting back here kind of living the good life yet because the good life that I want isn't until down the road when I can do all this other stuff. Uh-huh. And there's more potential or I don't know what you want to call it for it. Yeah, I, okay. I I see what you're saying. But um yeah. But I was just like during that whole thing I was I was reading about night terrors. Night terrors? Are you still you're still okay. You get did you get that looked at yet? You honestly. No. If you're you if you're still having those, that's been it's been over 3 months. No, it hasn't. Since school started, 3 months. It didn't start right when school started. You said it did. We have video it was, proof. It was close to when school started. We have video proof. It was like within a week. Video proof. So, well, even then, it's still like one. Oh, shoot, wait. Three months. Yeah. Right. Roughly one, three months. One, one, two. No, it's only been two. October. I think that's safe to say November. long enough, Mike. Yeah, so. I think it's safe to say that even two is a pretty big number when it comes to something like that. Yeah, probably. Maybe I should uh go get that checked out. No, I don't think I'll get it something. checked out. I think I'll just read up on it. Yeah. You know, it says uh let's see if I can get back to the home page somehow. There it is. Alright. It says uh it runs in the family, so maybe I'll ask my parents if they had night terrors as children. Yeah, like running through like the the specific age window or whatever. Well, there's there's not a specific age window. Well, I mean, like there could be in your family. You know I what I mean? So. Yeah. Because you're saying if you're younger, right? Or do you have them now or whatnot? Yeah. Well. Like a phase kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like night terrors or nightmares, and it's like uh, nightmares. It's like a movie, and you can't rem- and you can usually remember it perfectly. The night terrors, you just wake up. Confused and very afraid. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they're night terrors because I can never remember any of them. But do you wake up afraid though? Oh yeah. Okay. It's uh, you know, it's like watching what a scary s- movie, and then all of a sudden, boom, and it's like real life, and you're like, oh. okay. And you don't even well, know what you're what scared are- of. It's the worst part. You don't even know what you're afraid of. What do what do they say about night terrors? Like, what, do they say anything about causes here? No. No. They don't. They they don't know that much about them, or did you not find it yet? I don't think they have a cause. 
and they have to be. So there's always something when it comes to psychology in the mind that, you know, everything honestly in the universe has everything has some sort of influence or or something. Every single thing does. Whether you want to believe it or not, right, yeah. you know, like, um, I was reading up on uh the principle of the law of attraction. Have you ever heard of that? No. Yeah, Google that one. That's a good one. What is it? The law of attraction, and it culminates. I like this one thing I read from it compared to this other thing I read from it, and they both same thing, same basic meaning. But one explained it in the general idea of how it relates to science and how this law applies directly to the universe and how the universe works and how space works. Yeah. Okay. And then it says, well, it works right there. It works the same way with humans. Uh -huh. You attract what you think about. The universe, like things, attract. If I'm positive, I'm going to attract positive ideas, thoughts, and happenings into my life, right? Yeah. If I'm negative, you're going to attract negative people, negative thoughts, and negative happenings into your life. Mm-hmm. And that can be related to whether you, and then like that kind of idea culminates to if you know something, every, like it's limit, life is limitless, the mind is limitless. If you believe and know something can happen enough, that being or happening will happen for you. That kind of stuff or whatever. Yeah. But that, 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 it was an interesting concept. I've been, I read, I read, because I did a, like a paper kind of thing on that and. That was interesting. But it's like simple terms, like things attract. It's how the universe works. It's how people work. It's how everything works. Uh-huh. I was listening. It's, uh, uh, I listened. All right, here, wait. Let me just, what? Let me just say this. Yeah, okay, go ahead. All right, so mm -hmm. treatment says uh, reassure them that they will outgrow this disorder. And then if it's more chronic, you can wake them up when it usually happens. Right before it usually happens, so. I guess there's no treatment for me. No, oh, there's a treatment. You gotta read more into it. Because there's definitely a cause behind this. You just have to find uh, it. It says it can be caused by overtiredness. So, you know. I don't know how I can I fix that. I could see that with you because you're always overtired. That's true. But you wanna know why I'm always overtired? Because the night terrors. Yep. It's like a vicious cycle. I don't know how to beat it. Yeah. I mean, you could beat it. You could beat the sleep cycle. Sleep sleep is like a science. It's something you can master. I don't know about that. <laughs> you can though. I've mastered it. I swear to God. Well you don't have like, this extra curveball being thrown at you. No, not right now. It has no treatment. There's a treatment. There's no treatment. There's drugs. Treat. I don't think I'm gonna you take drugs. To those. But but what I'm saying, when it comes to sleep and whatnot, when it comes to, like, being overtired, like it said, right, overexhausted, a lot of people have that kind of problem, right? Yeah. Where they're always exhausted, tired, drained, right? A lot of people have that problem. But that problem honestly relates all to mental capacity. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you can make your mind think that you still have plenty of energy and that you can still do things, then you're not going to be tired. It's all... Honestly, if you read it in a book or on science, it's been proven that it's mental capacity. Yeah. I mean, it, I guess so. It, it, kind of, yes and no, right? I, I hear what you're seeing there, but... But there's only so far you can trick yourself before your yeah. yourself realizes that you're tricking yourself. Kind of, but it's not really tricking yourself because really, you don't... You have to teach yourself to learn to be run at full steam off of only a couple hours of sleep every night. You can't... You know what I mean? Well... So you can, you can trick you yourself for so long, but yeah. after a while, it catches up, and you have to get some. You have to sleep for a little bit longer, right? Steam runs out, and yeah, you're dead. But it all depends on the person, because like, you know, if you're if you're like physically or whatever in shape or whatnot or something like that, yeah, you can you're gonna have more energy. You know what I mean to play with, yeah, right? Than someone who's not like that or something. Because like me, I only get like six hours of sleep every night. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's nice every other every couple weeks to have a day where I can get a little bit more than six hours of sleep, but I still go fine off of six hours of sleep. Maybe a couple night, maybe this week's been weird. I've been kind of a little bit, I've been getting a little tired earlier than normal, 
but I haven't really been getting any more sleep. You know what I mean? I've been going to bed earlier, but I haven't been getting more sleep. Yeah. Because literally after six hours of me sleeping, I'm up. I wake up. Uh huh. Like alarm or no alarm, I'm up. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, crap, I, I still have two more hours that I can sleep, so I'm going to go back to bed. But then in that time, you're really not you're not really sleeping per se, you know what I mean? Because you're either waking up or you're you're just not in sleep mode. Yeah. You can call it sleep mode. Call it sleep mode? Sleep mode. What? Yeah. Sleep mode. Go down in the sleepy mode or whatever. So, it's like a, it's a mixture. It all depends on how you look at it. You know, it's just like everything, honestly. Everything, I've learned so much lately when it comes to like, just the way things work. It's all how people look at it. You have to read about the principles and the, the science of things to an extent, and a whole bunch of different ideas, and then you just apply it to yourself and see what you believe. Yeah. I feel, yeah. I listened to, a, uh, I listened to an interesting story today uh, in the car on one of the tapes about, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a biblical story, and I read about it when I was, I think I, this, it was when I read, but it was about um, Job. You, you, you've probably heard this story, honestly. You used to go to church. Yeah, I think this is either a story that I read in the I read myself or I heard about, but um, about Job, about God's friend Job, and how you know God and Satan in the Bible literally are like best friends, and they're always just chilling, right? Yeah, and they want uh, Satan's uh, talking about Job, and he's like, "I'm gonna turn your your friend Job against you and make him curse you," and God's like, "No, he wouldn't do that." So Satan's like, "You want to bet on it?" And God's like, he thinks about it for, for a minute. Yeah. Because um, I guess there's something with Job. He has like a safe in there around him. So things can't really get to him, right? Live in the perfect, like wealthy, healthy family, everything, right? Yeah. God blessed him with all these things. I don't know the backstory, probably because he did something or whatnot. But uh, bottom line, I'm you know, everything's going for him. He's got the safe in there around him. Every, life's good. Satan says, what happens if that safe net's down and I can get to him? My influence can get to him. You know, he's going to turn around. He's going to curse you. Because you weren't watching after him, looking after him or whatever. So they make the bet. Satan pulls his all-time number on him, which apparently Satan's all-time number is kills the, takes away the family, health, and wealth. Family, health, and wealth? Yeah. Okay. Family, health, and wealth. Maybe the fam, maybe the health wasn't something, but something with like well-being. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. his family dies, strips away his wealth. And then he's not in the best of shape anymore. So he takes God, Satan takes all that away, and um, I forget, I forget if it was a person or if it was Satan like himself or something. But Job's sitting like on a rock or whatnot, picking something out of his foot, and this guy comes over to him. He's like, "So this, this, and this happens. Why don't you just curse God and die or something? Because you know God took everything from him, right? Uh huh. Everything that he had. So and then he looked around." at the whatever, and he's like, uh, he's like, he just said no. He's like, no, I'm not going to curse God. God's my friend or whatever, right? Yeah. And then God's like, exactly. I knew he wouldn't curse him. So then in repayment for Job not going over and cursing God, God gave him double everything he had. Double or nothing. And then in the story of the Bob or whatever, Job became one of the richest people ever to live. Oh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think that's something trippy about the Bible that has everyone going like, like all right, Mike, what's your stance on religion? You're not an atheist, I don't think. No, no. No, you're not an atheist. What's what's your stance on religion? I I I don't really I don't think it really plays a part an active part in my life per se, you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, I can like, yeah, like you don't I don't feel like it really applies to me directly to you all that much. But if you if you believe in it and you know, you teach their own. You don't believe in it. You believe in it. You think it applies to everything. I don't care. As long as you don't just throw your beliefs, either not believing or hardcore believing, it straight in my face and shove it up my nose and down my throat, I don't care. You can yeah. do whatever you want. So, so, like, where do you stand on, like, what is your belief in... I always like to say higher power. I don't like to say God or this or that. I say higher power. I think... Oh, man. Okay. I think that there is a higher power. Okay. But I like to think... 
Um, he doesn't have an effect on you yet, right? He doesn't or the, yeah, he doesn't he's, he doesn't directly affect you my life. Yeah. You or, or you yeah, yeah. Okay. Or like I I I don't want to say this without well, I don't I don't think he really affects people's lives in the day-to-day life. I think he just, you know, sets an overall thing overall and then, theme and then some people might get think think like it's that way. And then when you die, that's that's when heaven you go and yeah heaven or hell them you know what i'm saying Cause I, yeah, I've, like a I like place. to think of an afterlife cuz you know it's, there's it's definitely reassuring. some kind of afterlife it's very reassuring yeah i it's like i that's a weird culmination i've discovered in the past like i don't know months to a year when it comes to dreams i think that my dreams specifically the ones that i remember right yeah cuz i haven't had a lot of dreams lately right well, no, but i've had no, no, a couple no, no, no. significant ones no, you, you always have dreams every single night. It's just that you don't remember them. You don't, yeah, you don't remember them. Or like, you don't like. Okay, so you have dreams every night, right? That's science proven, right? Yeah. Now, there's ones that you can remember, where you can see in the dream in your head, right? You're playing it through. Yeah. You wake up. You can think about it for like five minutes, right? Go back to sleep. Maybe it continues or it ends. There's then that you have dreams that you remember the whole thing through and you can remember it for years, hours to days to weeks afterwards, right? Yeah. Or at least the overall line of the dream. Yeah. And I think I've come to the belief or the conclusion that dreams that you can remember for weeks to months times, right? Either are things that have a direct influence in your life now or in a past life or a future life. You know what I mean? Right. But there's some kind of overlying message there. There's something going on in that dream that says something you ain't doing is ain't right, or it's something that's happened before, or just, you know what I mean? Something. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, why would you have a, such a understanding of it or a remembrance of it? Remembrance of the dream? Yeah, or like why could you connect to it so well or relate it to something so well? Well, I think... You know what I mean? I think... Mo- probably a good that could be like you know a good portion some of them something like that but I think also a few of them you know they're just so dumb and random you know what I'm saying like you yeah, just remember I them saying. yeah but so, honestly when it comes to like me yeah, I don't have dreams like that anymore I have, can't remember the last time I had a dream that was like completely random that I actually remembered because th- I don't put remembrance into a crazy dream no matter how much I remember it right Yeah, you look back and you say it's a crazy dream you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I'm saying the dreams that you remember that are actually, like, have the, the dream itself is something, like, significant, right? There's something. It's not just a random thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I see what you're saying. There's something, something in that department or pertaining to that. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about, um, I think, honestly, when it comes to, like, the religion thing, I think I don't I don't even I don't know how to describe it because it's like for me it's weird because I don't I don't know I think that it's not that I think that a higher power has an influence in my life every day but it's like inclinations or stuff I don't know when you I guess you could say when you read enough into the into the Bible or into like religion or whatnot and you can like read about the effects that certain things have on like life or whatever you know what I mean mm-hmm. So when you think about the Bible and, like, God, you think of believing that anything's possible in a sense, right? You can relate that to the Bible or a higher power, and then you think that if you believe in the higher power that it'll give you an edge when it comes to anything being possible or something like that. Yeah. Or you can seek out help from the higher being to make anything possible. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Or something like that. Like, like you can... Like you can do whatever you want to do because he's there to help you. It's the higher power is there to help you. you know? Yeah, and he's going to support you through it or whatnot. And then if he doesn't support you, you'll know whether it's because you fail or something bad happens to you or there's like a vision or something. Something, anything. I guess you could say. Yeah. Because I've, I've studied reading the Bible. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a decent way through it, but... All the Bible is, if you read about it or look into it, is a collection of stories saying what's right and wrong. It's the same message, the whole book, just with multiple different examples and situations and people. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. 
It's like a set of ideals. That's all it is. And it's the most it's the most given proof or written proof of there being a god or higher power and how it works and what right and wrong is. Yeah. And I guess you could you could relate it to like how you're rewarded for sticking with your own ideals and what's right. And how at the end of the day, no matter what happens to you, as long as you stay true to you and what you know is right, it'll work out for you. You will be repaid for your, you could say, suffering or your downfall or point thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. I feel like religion is only a touchy subject because people look too deep into it, you know? They're too hardcore on the ideals of, like, churches and religions. Yeah. Not, like, mm-hmm. they're over an overall understanding. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, people say when they say they, they're, like, they don't know how to talk about religion because they're, they're too idolized on the religions themselves and not, like, forming your own belief by reading about multiple religions or picking certain things from that religion that pertain to you or forming their own beliefs off of reading the Bible themselves or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So wait, so you were you you were raised uh, Methodist, right? Christian. I don't even Christian. know. I, I, honestly, I couldn't tell you. No, I think it was Lutheran, right? It might have been. Lutheran, I think you went to a Lutheran but... church, right? It was, uh, Methodist sounds. Maybe it was. Maybe it was Methodist. Jeez, you don't even know. Was... <laughs> nope, I don't know. Oh my goodness. Because I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't talked like that. Like we didn't talk about it like that. I guess I don't know. It was. It, I'm trying to think about the, what the name of the church. What's the church in Middleburg Heights? I don't know, dude. There's, Mike. There's one right no, by the a, fucking. There's got to be like a whole bunch. No, right by the uh, by the by the by the Y there, or whatever the rec center thing. The Y. Yeah, off of the highway by the Bob Evans up that street. Off the highway. I don't know. Yeah, by Olive Garden. Oh shit! That's the turnpike, Mike. Don't do that. Alright. No, go up a little bit higher. The there. Y. Um Middleburg Heights. Wait, over by where's Middleburg Heights? The fairgrounds, I think. Yeah. Fairgrounds. Oh, the fairgrounds. Wait, where are we going? You're over by Olive Garden off of seventy one by the Bob Evans wait, over there. What in city Heights. are we Middleburg Heights? Okay. Middleburg Heights. Should be in Middleburg Heights. Off of seventy one. Okay, I know you there's tons on seventy one what street? Bagley? Fuck, I don't... Uh, maybe it is Bagley. I can't think of the street I name. I think it has to be Bagley. It probably is Bagley. I can't think of the street name. Jeez, there's a lot of, uh... I don't know. You know where it is. I know I you I really do. don't know where it is. I never go on Bagley. I'm always on oh, Pearl. It's over that. It's over It's over that way. I'm off of one of those streets. Right up by the park. Right off the parkway. All right. And I don't know, maybe it is, maybe Wait, it was a Luther. Right uh, off the parkway? Yeah. Alright, I found the parkway. Found a whole bunch of schools. It's off the parkway. There's the, the Y. Entrance is, the Y's not off the parkway, the church is. Oh, wait, no, 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 okay. I think I found it. Uh, Bethel. Doesn't say what kind of church it is. Um, oh, but that's the church, though. No, I don't know the just, specific religion. It just says Bethel, Cleveland. All right, well, I don't know the specific religion. I don't really care about the specific religion because I don't think myself as any kind of religious person when it comes to specific religion. I have my own beliefs formed around God. A lot of it's because of what how I've read the Bible. But if someone gives me another work of art when it comes to God or a higher power, I'll read it. And my beliefs might change or shift when it comes to certain things, but from what I've read in the Bible to that stuff, yeah, you know, everyone, you, all those religions use the Bible as their basis, right? And it's all interpretation. Each of those different religions interpret the Bible in their own specific way. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, like, I mean, that's like that's that's it. That's how I look at it. It's. Each of them interpret the Bible in their own way, so why don't you form your own interpretation of the Bible? Uh huh. That makes sense. That's like deep. That's that's honestly how I look at religion, and I think that people just get too into the hardcore ideals of it, you know, left and right, just like government and stuff. People are too left and right with these things. Yeah. They're not willing to form their own belief in the middle. Huh. Wow, that's uh, pretty deep, Ryan. I don't know if it's deep. It's like the way it is, and you know that's the way it is. It's pretty deep. 
I know. I'm a libertarian too. A libertarian. I'm a liberal. Uh, yeah, I'm a liberal. A liberal. Yeah. I don't think a libertarian is the same thing as a liberal. Is it? I don't even know. I'm a liberal though. We'll call it liberal because the liberal is what it is for sure. Maximum freedom. Minimum government and maximum freedom. Yeah, I don't think. I think a mm-hmm. libertarian's closer to a. Uh, Republican, is it? I don't know, go with liberal then. But uh, that's another thing with like the government and stuff and politics. People are too left and right. They're not. They don't have an understanding of the extremes to know that the middle is where it's at, and how like our government's becoming a more extremist government when it comes to right and left. There's not as much middle action going on, and that's the biggest problem with it or whatever. Yeah. Did you? Did I show you that video of Russell? Hold on, I don't, I'll, I'll oh, wait, yeah, right yeah, now. you sent that to me. The Russell Brand video, did you watch that? No, I never watched it. I, Mike, you suck. I was somewhere when you sent it, I'm sorry. You still gotta watch these things, this is all important stuff. Alright, let me, uh, scroll. This is important life concepts, Mike, you need to, you need to be reading up on. Coming from Who? I'll just find it. I'm going to find it right now. I found now. it. I found it. It's right it. here. I lied. I found it. Oh, wait. Trash that. What'd you find? I didn't find the it. Interview? Oh, I'll I found just, it. There I'll, you I'll go. Just, how about I just link it to you? I already got it. I got it. Oh, wait. I think they got rid of the original one. I don't see it up here anymore. Oh. There's this one right here, but I don't think this is the original one that I saw. Ah, uh, here it is. I got it. Oh, wait. No, the video is removed by user. Never mind. I found one. Okay. Yeah, so. Here we go. I'll link you the one that this is This is part of it. So do you support Obama, the... then? No. Obama. I don't support. I, if there was any politician that I've read up on that I support, it is Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Look him up. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul's the man. Ah, uh, jeez. Ron Paul would have been the savior of our country. Ron Paul. Had he been elected. Ah, oh, man. If you go on Reddit, uh, uh, on r dash circle jerk, they, they like to post about Ron Paul. It's pretty funny. Cause Mike, why are you already hating on him? You didn't even look. You didn't even look into him. I know who he is. I've read into him. So, yeah. I mean, he doesn't seem like the worst, but... I don't know. He seems too good to be true. Seems like an Obama. Yeah, I, I, you could say that, but... He was just someone who was honestly more in the mill than anybody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he had to... When, when he was running for an, uh, an election, he had to... He had to compromise and become go either right or left to get... To have a shot. Well, he was he was always more liberal leaning. Yeah, but like liberals kind of liberals the middle, right? No, liberals left. No, liberal is like liberals moderates not the see, middle. Conservative the middle, is one but, side, but, liberals the other side. Moderates the middle. Yeah, but liberals not. Uh, see that liberal liberals a touchy thing. I don't think of the liberal as an extreme left. But I it's think considered of when the I left think side. Of, it is considered more the left side than the right side. I will agree right, wait, with you there. Let, let me just let me just uh look it up real quick. Go ahead. Left side. I agree with you there when you right say that it's side. more the left side than the right side, though. I do agree with you there. Wait, wait, we might be we might be doing this backwards. Hold those left right thoughts. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I'm, I honestly don't know the specifics of what side's considered right and what's left. Just that one's right and one's left, and they're both extremes. Ah, here it is. Um, libs have always been referred to as left. Okay. Okay. So liberals yeah. left. Liberals and... left. I was. Wait. Sorry. So, communist is left. Communism is no. Communism's right. Socialism's left. Socialism's left. Yeah. Socialism's left and communism's right. No, no, no. Then, right. Socialism and communism. Both left. Are they both on the same side? Yeah. What's on the far right then? Fascism? Uh, dictatorism. No, dictator. 
No, wait, wait. You no, don't wait. you don't call you don't describe it as dictator. Let's look. I'm gonna look it up. Political uh, spectrum. Polit. Got it. Start it. See if it pictures. Okay. Here it is. Right versus left. Political spectrum. Left. Left wing on the very far. Very far left wing is. Um. Uh. Anarchism. Or anarchism. Right? Anarchy. -ism. Anarchy. Yep. And then on the far right is fascism. So I was right about the fascism. Wait, what are you looking Oh, I see. Alright. This is like. This one doesn't really even have a direct middle. And then on the left it goes. Anarchism, communism, socialism, yeah, liberalism, right? Yeah. Right, fascism, Nazism, monarchism, and conservatism. And then there's no direct middle on this one. This is the one, this is this one, though. Let's go to, uh. I'm trying to look at another one here. This one's like examples, kind of. Liberal. See, liberal's more, in this one, liberal's more towards the center. More than conservatism is. Well, I'm I'm still looking, I'm not saying anything specific. I'm just saying this on this one. It's more towards the middle. In America, it's on it's the left side. Yeah, I'm mean, yeah on America it's the left side. Because we don't have those crazy all the way left side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another weird thing about the American political system and how we've they teach like political beliefs right when it comes to America. They don't really like have a neutral perspective on like the different. Like, there's no neutral pers neutral uh perspective when you teach when we teach politics in school, right? Mm -hmm. They don't. That's the one thing I guess I hate. Like, I'm reading this book. I've been reading. I'm, I haven't. I haven't read it lately, but I got this book called Leftism, and it's about extremes, right? Yeah. In government, but it's not written as a biased form at all because it uses direct definitions of words. You know what I mean? Yeah. And examples, like when it says, blah, 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 definition this, blah, 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 is the example of this by definition of this, and by definition of this, this is not this, because if it was this, this wouldn't have this, and it would have that. Right. Like how he uses to describe democracy and says, democracy by definition is something, I don't know if it was democracy, but it was something that relates to America, it says is the expression of the most personal liberty, right? I think it might have been democracy. Democracy? Yeah. Yeah, like, sounds about right. The express having and applying the most amount of personal liberty. And when you apply that to America, we're not really a democracy anymore. You know what I mean? We don't really express the maximum amount of personal liberty a person can have, right? Well, or whatever. You can't, you know you what can't I mean? do the max. So you can't do the max, but we're definitely not. We're doing a lot less than we used to do. Think about it that, you know, see what I'm saying there? Yeah, I guess so. When you think about a progression through time, our government has gone from more towards the middle to separating to right and left, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why I don't have the compromise anymore in the, in the shutdowns and lockouts. Lockout. Because there's no middle, uh, good, good, what, what's the word? Compromise or no, no more middle ground or whatever. Yeah. No more neutral perspective or neutral area, or however you want to describe it or call it. Uh huh. So, I, it all depends how you look at it. I like I like to think you just read the books, try to get the neutral, neutral perspectives. You got to find the books, the the right books with the right definitions, you know. And you just got to form your own beliefs when it comes to religion, politics, philosophy, beliefs, everything. Even the way the mind works, you have to read different ideas about it and then form your own opinions based off of your experiences and your beliefs and your happenings, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I think life is supposed to, that's how a lot of things should be, but most people don't do that, right? Uh-huh. At least they don't think about it like that or they wait till later on in their life to form those beliefs like me, which is weird. I'm doing all that now and me being one who wants to talk about that a lot now no one else my age wants to talk about that because they don't want to do that or have any idea of what any of that is. Yeah. Like how I forget, I don't remember if it was a book I was reading or if it was an article I read, but someone was talking about the biggest problem with, you know, voting in America and that the biggest problem with voting is uneducated voters. They don't know what they're voting for or what the people stand for or what 
all these ideas are, you know, or what they really are. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Because is Obamacare a good thing? No. But is the reason why the Republicans fighting it the right reason to fight it? No. <laughs> so it's it's all just a a jumble, and it's it's a scramble to find the truth. <laughs> yeah. And then once you find the truth, you have to be like, man, that's uh, that's not what we're supposed to stand for, right? Or something like that. Yeah. But it's it's all just a jumble, and it's it's always gonna be there with this country. I mean, I forget. I was reading somewhere. I don't know if it was in a it was in a book or another article, but someone was like, eventually this country's gonna have a revolution, right? And when it happens, everyone's gonna be so shocked that some a country like this would have a political revolution. But it's not gonna be an economical well, we, revolution per we're se. We're not gonna have like a revolution. It's not really gonna be. A, we're not gonna have a French revolution where we we're killing the it's, the it's, people. It's, it's not really. I don't think we're even gonna need to. We're not even gonna need to take up arms, because. If you, because right in our constitution it says if the government does not work, we can have a vote to abolish it and re- start a new one. Yeah. But the thing is, is that people don't want to start a new, new government. government. Yeah, because they don't. Because they don't know. You you can't know. Who knows? Maybe whoever gets the vote screws it all up even worse than the old ones. So. Yeah, or like, what would happen if we could create a new government, or what's the real problems behind this government, or this or that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I know what you're saying. It's like a it's like a constant but steady fear of what would happen if it happened. Uh huh. But I don't think we're gonna have a violent overthrow. I think it's gonna be hard to develop a system that works again. I mean, the system we had originally and what was originally intended to be put out, that system worked when it was actually working the way it was supposed to work. Yeah. But it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work really anymore. Uh huh. And you can see that over time, how it's changed, and that the rights and left have, sh- have shifted and whatnot. Yeah. Well, poli- politics is just touchy unless you read the books and the articles to understand it. Or actually read about some of the important issues that are going on. Yeah. And try to find an actual moderate outlook on it. Because no one's going to read the thousand-page bill. Not even the people that wrote it are going to reread it to make sense of it. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. So it's hard to really even know what the, what it's doing. I think people just get too worked up over this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's funny to, to that people do get worked up over it and they get in such heated debates over this kind of stuff because it's nothing to really, you know, just, you just have to understand it so then you can be educated and make the right decisions as a person because if voters were making the right decisions because they had the right information, then a lot of the stuff that would happen wouldn't happen. Uh Because you wouldn't let it happen, you know? Because if you think about it, if enough people knew the truth about the two big Republican, the two big political parties and the candidates and all that, most people would vote for independent voters, right? Because if they knew enough, they would say, this person doesn't have what I want and this person doesn't, so we got to find somebody else because we're not going to settle for this, right? Well, ideally. Yeah, and also recently... In the debates, you can, or not the elections, it feels like more and more people are choosing from the the lesser of two evils. Like, nobody's really choosing someone they back. They're just choosing against the person they don't back. But, yeah, the person that they think is, like, a little bit better or that isn't as bad. Yeah, or... it's not even, like, better. It's just not as bad. Yeah, think of, yeah, like they're just picking them because like this guy's not good and that guy's not good, but I got to pick one of them so this one's a little bit better than that guy. Yeah. Or I like this this idea a little bit better than that idea. Yeah. Like the that's why they that's why honestly if you think about it, when you think about the political rants and stuff that these candidates go on, they pick the smallest and dumbest things to fight about. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. They try to win over the people with that little ideal because they know that's how it works. Yeah. Which in, which in turn is truth, but it's also very, very sad. Yeah, it is. But, but. I don't know. It, it's just the way it is. You can't really do much about it, I guess. It's just how it is. You know. But you can hope that one day the people will read the books, become educated, learn about the systems and the way things work. Yep. I just hate being, I just hate how for me it's like I'm doing all that now and I want to talk to people about it now. But not many people have an understanding of it to where they can talk about it or feel comfortable talking about it. 
Yeah. yeah. And like in my eyes, if you have a if you have a neutral uh, perspective and understanding of all these things, then why do you have such a a tr- hard time talking about them in general? Like, why would it become a heated debate if you have a neutral perspective on it and or open new ideas? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, I guess people think when I talk to them about the way things work, they think I'm very set in my way of how things work. I'm not, but I'm not set in my way. It just seems like I am because no one's firing back with reasons that say it doesn't work like the way I'm saying it works. Uh You know what I mean? They just say it doesn't work that way, but then they don't have an example. Like, I say it works this way because this happened in my life or in this person's life. There's your example. You know, you have to be able to back up what you're saying. Yeah. That's a weird thing that I've brought I've brought to the table a lot when it comes to talking and debating lately things, and why I want to kind of pursue this like speaking thing, you know, because I got the facts and the proof and the examples, and I'll change my beliefs if I have the proof if there's the proof and the examples to say that this isn't the right idea because of this, but no one ever fires back with that. They just say, "Nope, you're not right." Yeah. Uh huh. And it gets aggravating too because you want to know the the truth of it, and you want to say, "Well, okay." Maybe that's not a right idea, so why not? And then you got to draw the line and say, well, what's to wonder? Where is the extent that you can say why not to? Why not? Or something like that. Yeah. I forget what it is. I just heard that, too. I forget how it went, though. Oh, well. It's all just very interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's weird, too, because, honestly, I find a lot of my like time and stuff... Which is weird, instead of like playing games or stuff, or kind of like having quote unquote fun listening to these different ideas and forming like ideas of it and whatnot, you know? Instead of just like not worrying about that stuff. Yeah. Because most people would say when you're my age or your age, don't worry about that stuff, right? Yeah. Wait to worry about it. But I guess what you could say to an extent, once you get into it and have an understanding of it, you want to learn more about it. You don't want to stop and wait. You want to get that stuff going now so then you don't have to worry about it later or whatever. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I see. It's just something like that. Yeah, it's just it's a tough subject. So it's something that everyone will kind of jump on board with. Maybe. So I don't know. Just give it time or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, so hey, Mike, that was that was a that was a good show. You like that one? Oh yeah, it was. Uh, it was decent. Pretty tough. Hopefully the hopefully the quality will be better though, you know. I'm really hoping, dude, we get this thing synced up and ready to go. Yeah, dude. We could that's I think gonna be a good a good booster here. Mm-hmm. So the next step once if the quality thing worked out good, next step, guess. Then after that we'll work on some hardcore ideals. Then after that, we can circle jerk on the podcast together. Circle jerk on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Good times. So hey, thank you everybody for uh listening to was this 18 number 18 of, number 18 of the stalker effect with me ryan and mike so i'm gonna sign off and mike's gonna do his little bit because that's the way we do it see you later